Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I'm so sorry I didn't let you know about this sooner, but you could get on one Photo Effects 2025 for free. The reason why I'm saying I'm sorry I didn't let you know about this sooner is because you need to claim your free copy by today, January 16th. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to this website. Here, you could claim your free copy. You could see you need to claim it by today. Hopefully, they extend it. I don't know if they will, but hopefully they do. And you own it outright. There is no subscription. Now, you may be wondering, well, what can I do with On One Photo Effects 2025? Well, actually, you could do quite a bit. You could use it as a standalone application or as a plugin. And I'm going to show you how to use it both ways. Let's start out with how to use it as a standalone application. Now, as you can see, I have it opened here. And just to be clear, this is On One Effects 2025. There is a new version, On One Effects 2026. That is not free. You would have to pay for that. But On One Effects 2025, as you'll see, is very capable and it will do a great job. So let's use it as a standalone app. I'm going to edit a photo. On my desktop, I have a Nikon RAW file. We'll open this up into On One Effects. And as I mentioned, it is an unedited RAW file. Over on the left-hand side, we have a bunch of tools. Also, if I open up this panel, we have a bunch of presets as well. So if you just want to jump to a preset, you could do that. But what I do want to do is I want to crop it. So I'm going to open up the crop tool. And you can see that I did a pretty good job of framing it to rule of thirds. But I would prefer that this lower horizontal line be right on the horizon. So I'm going to make sure that I'm cropping to the original ratio. And I'm just going to grab to the top handle here and pull down. And then move it over so that the lighthouse is on this left-hand vertical line. And the horizon, or that break wall out there, is on the lower horizontal line. I'm satisfied with that. I'll click this little blue check mark to commit to that crop. Now I want to do some editing. In effects, we do editing with filters, and those are over on the right-hand side. And if I click Add Filter, you can see that there are a number of different filters to choose from. If you hover over them, it will tell you what that filter does over on the right-hand side. You also could use masking. There's a number of different ways to mask, and I will be doing that in a moment. But right now, I want to do a global tone adjustment. So I'm going to go to Tone Enhancer. And you can see we have the sliders you would expect for tone, exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, whites, blacks. I'm going to start out by opening up the shadows, bringing in the highlights. I'm going to get a white point. The way you do that in on one is holding the J key while moving the white slider to the right. Eventually, you'll start to see some red where you're blowing out the highlights. And you can see there's red on this post right here. Now, usually I don't like to blow out highlights at all, but in this case, it's not too bad. Now, with shadows or blacks, the same thing, hold in that J key and move this black slider to the left. Eventually, you'll see blue come in the screen. That means you're crushing the shadows in those areas. I don't mind crushing the shadows a little. So that is good. I think that's a good tone enhancement adjustment. The next thing I want to do is something with color. So we're going to go to Add Filter, and this too will be global. I'm going to go to the Color Enhancer. And here I'm going to increase the saturation. And I think I want to warm it up just a touch. So we're warming it up. Now I want to do something with just the sky. I want to make the sky look a little more significant, a little more foreboding. So I'm going to go to add filter. I want to mask it for the sky. So over on the left hand side, I'm going to click on the little sky radio button. You can see I have a blue overlay over what will be adjusted. We're going to go to dynamic contrast, one of my favorite filters in on one. And this adjustment now will just affect the sky as you can see. So we're going to make it look a little better. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to do something to the foliage over in here. So to do that, we're going to add a filter. We're going to mask it for the flora. And you can see that we, when I hover, I get this red overlay. And then when I click, I'll have the blue. Natural ground adds a little more. So we'll click on that as well. It's also getting the rocks, but that's okay. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to add a color adjustment. With the color adjustment, I'm going to jump over to yellow and I'm going to increase the saturation and I'm going to make the yellow components of the flora brighter. 
Then we're going to go to green and I'm going to increase saturation and make those components darker. And then you could see here's a before after. There's before that adjustment and after that adjustment. So I think that looks pretty good. Pretty much done with the image. I just want to finish it off with a vignette. So we'll click add filter and we'll go down to vignette. There's a number of different styles to choose from across the top. There's subtle, strong, big softy edges. There's more in this drop down. I think I, I, what I like to do is choose one of the styles and then just tweak it. So I'll go with strong, but it's a little bit too strong. So what I want to do is pull it away from the middle a little bit and not as dark. So it's more subtle like that. There's before and after. So I'm done with the image. Now I could save it. Go to the lower right hand side and click on the little blue check mark. And then you have the option to save it as a Photoshop file. A TIFF file, JPEG, PNG, or DNG. Let's save it as a JPEG. So we'll save it as a JPEG, and I'm going to call it Lighthouse. And we'll save it to the desktop. And then I could choose the quality, the JPEG quality. I think 90 would be good. So let's move this up to 90 and click OK. Now it's saving it to the desktop, and then it closes down. Now if I want to go back in and re-edit anything, or maybe I want to save it as a TIFF file instead, or something else... It's over here now in the film strip. So just double click on it. It will open it up. All our adjustments are over here. And I could say, click the checkbox again. And maybe this time I'll save it as a TIFF file or PNG or DNG or whatever I want. Keep that file name and just click save. So we could save it as different things. Um, and it remembers our edits. So that's important. Now, let's talk about using On One Effects 2025 as a Lightroom plugin. We're going to work on this image. This, of course, is an image of a hawk. This is an unedited RAW file. And I think most often you're going to use effects. When you use it as a plugin, you're going to do some editing in Lightroom first. So I'm going to crop it like I did with the other image. I just want to tighten it up a little bit. So what we'll do here is I'm going to grab from this corner down and just tighten it up. A touch. I think that looks pretty good. And then we're going to maybe open up the shadows a little, bring the highlights down, and get a white and black point in Lightroom. You hold the Alt or Option key and Alt if you have PC option. If you have Mac, click on the white slider to get a black screen. As you move to the right, when you start to blow out the highlights, you'll get color coming through. As I mentioned before, I don't care to blow out highlights at all, so I'll just back that off until that color dissipates. Similarly for the blacks, hold in that Alt or Option key, move it to the left, you see color come through. That means you're crushing the shadows in those areas. I don't mind doing that a little bit. It's pretty good. Now, at this point, let's send this over into On One Effects 2025 and do some editing there. To do that, from Lightroom, go up to File, Plugin Extras, then over and down to On One Effects 2025. Here you have the option to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. These are the adjustments I just did, or edit a copy, and it's going to ignore those adjustments. So it's not going to be cropped, and it's not going to have those tone adjustments I just did. I want to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, and On One recommends that you edit it as a smart photo PSD. That way it will remember your edits, and you could go back in and re-edit something if you want to. You do have other options, though. So I'm going to keep it with these default settings and click OK. Now it will take this, create that PSD, and it will open it up into On One Effects 2025. Now once it does, you'll notice it's going to have all those Lightroom edits I just did, and I could take up the editing from this point. So what I want to do is I want to bring out some of the texture of the furs, the, f the fur, some of the texture of the feathers of the hawk. So we're going to click on Add Filter, and then it has Animal, and you notice if I hover, I get that red overlay. If I click, I'll get blue. That means I've got it pretty much perfect. And we're going to add Dynamic Contrast. Again, this is probably my favorite filter, and you can see that it's only affecting the bird. So we're going to just kind of just make it look a little more sharp, I guess. There's before, and there's after. There's before and there's after. I think I also want to do something with the color of the bird as well. So we're going to add filter. And we're going to go to animal again. Now if I wanted to add or subtract, let me show you what you do here. If I wanted to actually make the sign that the bird is standing on more colorful as well, I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to click on animal and then we're going to go to a color enhancer. 
And then what we could do is we could look at our mask, go to the lower left-hand side and click on the little mask icon, and you could see it's giving this black and white rendition. Click this little downward-facing arrow, and I could see a red overlay. Now, it's kind of opposite of what I'm used to. Typically, when I see a red overlay, that means where the overlay is is what's getting adjusted. This is opposite. So where the overlay isn't is what's getting adjusted. So what I want to do is I want to um, add to this the sign. So to do that, we're going to get a masking brush. And we're going to paint in the adjustment. So we go up here. We're going to make the opacity so it's at 100. And then we could get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key. The left bracket key makes it smaller. And then you'll notice that as I paint, I'm removing the mask from the sign which, in fact, means that the adjustment I do will affect the sign as well. So we'll get a smaller brush. I'm just going to do it real quick and not try to do too perfect. Although there is an option to use the perfect brush. The perfect brush will look for edges, and it will help you make sure that you're only painting this on what you want it on. So it's going to look for edges, basically, and try to keep your brush stroke confined to, uh, in this case, the sign. So I think that's good enough for this demonstration. Now I'm going to turn off masking. Just go over here and click this little icon again. And here I want to add some saturation to the bird. So you can see how it's affecting the sign and the bird. Like that. I think that looks pretty good. Now I think I want to do something. I'm not sure if this will work, but I want to darken the background a little bit. So we're going to add a filter. We'll hover over background, see what it's selecting. That looks pretty good. It got everything but the bird. And it's got missing part of the sign, so we'll fix that. And what we want to do is do a tone enhancer here. Then again, we're going to turn on the mask so I could see it. And I'm going to um, remove it from this part of the sign. Oh, we're painting. We need to erase. Sorry. So we need to erase. Turn off that perfect brush. And we need to paint. That's it. I'm sorry. So... So I always get backwards when it's missing the, or when the mask is backwards of what you're used to. It always kind of makes me have to think for a moment. So what we're going to do here now, we'll turn off the mask. And then we'll come in and I'm just going to darken it down a little bit. Maybe even bring highlights in a little bit and whites down a little bit. And then we're going to add our last filter, which is that vignette, which I often like to add. And we'll do a subtle one here, I think. See what that strong one looks like? Strong one doesn't actually look too bad, actually. And I think I'm done. So when you're done, you're satisfied with your edit, go down here and click the little blue check mark. And what it will do is it will save this in the same folder as the original image, and it will show in Lightroom. And if you want to do some Lightroom edits, you could do it as well. So here is our in the image that we just edited in on one effects 2025 and here is the raw file that i did some edits to in lightroom so as you can see it's done so again i'm sorry i told you about this so late i actually got an email from on one about this last maybe weekend and i just totally forgot about it stumbled across the email now and saw that it's expiring today so again a link to get your free copy of On One Effects 2025 will be in the description below this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.